Hey folks, in this video we're going to be covering problem 262 on LeetCode. It's called Trips and Users and it is a hard problem so let's get into it right away. Uh, hopefully you've read the problem by now. We're just going to work towards the solution and I'm just going to kind of walk you through my thought process. So uh, this is the kind of output we want to see. So on a day over day basis we want to be able to see the cancellation rate. So really the way I like to break it down, I like to reverse engineer what we need here. So in a perfect world, what kind of data set can we expect to see that'll allow us to get to this kind of um, this kind of information? Well, what if we had uh, a subset of data that would essentially be broken out day over day and it would have the number of cancellations for that day and the total number of requests for that day then we can just divide those two values and get the cancellation rate now obviously that sounds very simple but it, it's important to kind of walk through the problems uh, with that kind of mindset so how do we get to something like that well let's start with that data set first so how would we uh, build a data set like that so obviously um, if we're looking to break the data down day over day and we know we have two tables to choose from and um, How do we derive the actual date of the activity? Well, that's going to be from the trips table So I know for a fact that I would need the request at column to pull the date How would we compute the cancellation rate? Well uh, to get those two fields the number of cancellations for that day and the total number of requests again we're going to be util utilizing these two tables but given the criteria here we need to make sure that we are following the guidelines here for instance we have to make sure that neither the driver nor the user are banned for instance so let's go ahead and build our data set first so um well you know we'll leave this tbd what exactly we need to pull here but how do we get to that solution what columns what fields what logic do we need well again to get that request that column that's going to come from the trips table so select from the trips table and uh, again we're going to have to join to the users table but we're going to have to do it twice because we need to be able to identify the client as well as the driver both of which exist in this table but you can only define what a client is or what a driver is based on their role so essentially we're going to have to join two times to the user table so i'm going to perform an inner join here because that's going to allow me to only pull records uh, of trips that have an associated user id or client id or driver id what have you so i'm going to join to the users table And what fields are we joining on? Well, the trip's client ID must equal the user's user's ID, correct? And then in addition to that, because that's not the only thing, because again, remember the user's table has both the clients and the drivers. We want to ensure that we're only pulling the actual user in this scenario. So what do we say? We're going to say the user's role, right? So in the users table, the user's role has to be client. That's how we know that we're only pulling in clients and we're joining to clients and not uh, drivers at this time. So once we have that, and again, just to kind of identify, this is gonna be our, um, our users or clients, right? And again, we can, as part of the, uh, of, of the join condition, we can also men mention the fact that uh, we want to pull only unbanned users, but I'm going to do that in the where clause. It doesn't really matter at this point. So now that we have that join, I'm going to join again to the users table. Uh, this time we'll give it an alias of D for driver. So T dot driver ID. So not client ID. This time we want to make sure the trips driver ID equals the, uh, in the from the users table the user's ID and how do we know it's a driver well the 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 role the role of this table must be or the role of this record must be driver and that's how we know that we've pulled in uh, the driver um, and then you know we can kind of build on to our where clause so just make sure that the u dot band equals and if you look down here it's it's not like a true or false. It's it's an you know enumerated value. So it's either yeah it's either yes or no. So u dot band equals no. And d dot band equals no. 
Now that we have that, one other part of this condition is, you know, was that they wanted to make sure that we're only pulling in this date range. So as part of this where condition, we can also say and uh, make sure that the trips request at, right? So when did the, the request take place? It took place between, and then we, we plug in that date. So uh, October 1st, 20. 13 and October 3rd, 2013. So that's gonna be you know our primary criteria. Now we can go ahead and build those, those columns that we need. So we know we need the request at date because that's ultimately gonna give you uh, what day the activity took place. Now, how do we derive the, the number of cancellations? We'll get to that in just a second. Well, what we can do here um, to get the cancellations is if we had a count of the total number of cancellations attributed to those that were canceled by the driver or canceled by the client, it has to be either of these. It can't be the completed, obviously. And that's gonna be from the field called status within the trips table. So what we can do here is we can have a case statement. So uh, case when and T dot status. So when the status is either, right, so it's in, and I'm gonna put these two values right here. I'm just gonna copy and paste, it makes life much easier. So case, when T dot status in cancel by driver or cancel by client, then one, else zero, end, right? So that's gonna give us either a one or a zero, and what we can do is we can just simply sum it up. So we can sum all the ones, and that's gonna give us a total count of what was actually uh, canceled. And obviously give this column a name, so we can call it um, counts canceled, for instance. And now all we're missing here is the total count of requests for that day, which simply we can just do a count all, and again, give that an alias just to keep it, you know, uh, consistent. So count total requests, okay? So now that we have this, uh, we can simply turn this into a CTE. So CTE, common table expression, give that a name. So common table expression, daily cancellations, I guess, right? Any, anything you want. So um, with this CTE as, And now this is my subset, right? So this is the subset I was talking about earlier where we have our request date, we have uh, the total number of cancellations for that day, and then uh, of course we have the total count. Uh, I noticed there's no group by here, so we do wanna ensure that we have a group by, so group by t.requestID. That's gonna give you the daily level aggregation of you know of the sum that's happening here and the count that's happening here so once we have that now I can all I have to do is select uh, the request at and I'm gonna try and you know to try to make it look like the output here so that the column name should be day as day okay so select request at as day and again we're, we're pulling from this CTE up here Okay, so we have the day. How do we compute the cancellation rate? Well, again, it's going to be the you know the sum of count uh, the count canceled divided by the total request. So simply put, it's going to be this number divided by this number. And I think they did want to round it to two decimal places, which it says right here. So uh, that's pretty straightforward. Should just round this to two decimal places and uh, give that an alias of cancellation rate just to make it consistent with what the request is. So we will go ahead and do that and that should give us um, what was asked for. Let's try and run this. Oops, and we have a bit of a, a syntax error. So I did forget to put the on clause here because we want to identify that we're joining on these conditions which, which follow the on clause. So my mistake there. But um, now that we fixed that, let's try and run this. Looking good, I'm gonna hit submit.
And there you have it.